Um, so Moshe, what, um, once somebody does this, what makes something like stick in your memory? How do we determine what's important enough to hold on to? Yeah, that's an interesting question, and uh, there are different answers to it. And I'm afraid that Josh would say that that's what a neuroscientist would say. I'm trying to answer like a historian, <laughs> but I, I can't. Uh, but, uh, well, obviously, things that are highly emotional are highly memorable. Right, and the, in one extreme is PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. So that's really the extreme, but it just shows how strong emotion, uh, how strong is the role of emotion in, in uh, leaving things in memory. But uh, one of the, be uh, the most interesting, for me at least, and for the recent uh, field that's called cognitive neuroscience, is uh, more, more uh, recent understanding that one of the most potent uh, cues to, to leave information in memory is novelty. So um, if you let me, I'll, I'll give a little introduction about uh, why the word future in our, in our uh, um, title here. So one of the, uh, and it might, for people who, do, who don't study memory, it might sound completely intuitive and they'll be surprised that we're so excited about this. But just in the last maybe five or seven years, uh, researchers of memory and, and, and the, in the brain and in psychology overall, uh, psychology is also in the brain, but I mean neuroscientists and, and psychologists alike are realizing more and more the role of memory in our thinking about the future. So generally, you know, I know I growing up was, would think that uh, memory is like a photo album and it just help you to reminisce or to remember things uh, on demand for a specific task, but uh, uh, it's just a machinery there to entertain us almost. Whereas uh, we realize more and more, and, and with the advent of, of imaging, that we can actually look at the, at the brain systems that are recruited for different tasks, we realize that memory is there for, for the future. Memory is there like a big database that helps us prepare and helps us plan and helps us simulate uh, different scenarios and, and be ready overall. So, so it's less of a photo album and more a machine that helps us survive in the future. Uh, what was the question <laughs> 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 that was the introduction, yes. Uh, uh, but novelty then is is very powerful uh, um, piece of information or, or characteristic that leaves information in memory because uh, the brain seeks uh, to expand this database that we have. We want to be ready to more scenarios in the future. We want to be able to plan for more more possible uh, contexts and, and alternatives. We want to be able to be ready for more uh, uh, for a larger repertoire. And we are able to do this if we can expand our database. So uh, uh, again, excuse the technical uh, 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 terminology here, but it is a database. And to expand it, we continuously look for new things because new things are things that by definition, we don't know already. They're not in our memory yet. That's why advertisers that almost in every respect uh, figured out things way before neuroscientists have, that's why every, every product has the, the word new in it. Something has to be new because it attracts attention. And, and uh, capitalizing on these people who study babies who cannot communicate um, verbally yet, uh, still we want to study how they think and how they, they uh, do cognitive tasks, and we capitalize on the novelty. We know that the novel aspect in the display will grab their attention faster. And the reason we think is because whatever is novel can be added to my database and help me later on. Josh, was the idea of novelty something that resonated for you as you were? Well, I was going to say that's exactly the answer you'd expect to get from a Jew. <laughs> Uh, um, I mean, in all seriousness, this, I, this notion of we have memories for the sake of projecting ourselves into the future um, is something that I think cognitive neuroscience is just starting to wrap its head around. But collectively, culturally, is a very, very old idea in the Jewish tradition that like, part of the reason that we rehearse this set of memories that is the Jewish tradition is to prepare ourselves for what comes next. And, to prepare ourselves for how to make decisions in the present, how to live our lives in the present. And that's actually uh, what I think Moshe would agree our, our, our memories are doing on an individual level. We, the only reason we are stocking away this information, which is coming at an enormous um, expense, right? I mean, our brains consume a quarter of the glucose that we're ingesting. It's very, very energetically expensive to have a brain to form memories to take the, the, the energy to actually record the, the past. The reason we do it is so that we can make sense of the present and plan for the future.